Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. I mean, in this day and age with, with hashtag Me Too and women looking for equal rights and dignity and integrity, I don't think this is something we need to look at anymore. Tonight, a high, highly anticipated decision in Wapaton. A local business is hoping to bring topless women back to its stage or face shutting down, while women's rights groups were on the other side of the issue. But as Valley News team's Veronica Marshall found out, both groups left the city council meeting disappointed. A quiet but heated crowd filled city chambers, waiting to hear the fate of the Oasis bar. I know I've received calls uh, opposed to the topless dancing, and I've received as many calls, particularly today, um, in support of the Pausch family. The bar lost its cabaret license due to a mail mix-up, and owners say the accident could force the more than 40-year-old bar to close. Give me a year, I like 18 months, but give me a year so I keep my family and my family going. But women's rights groups and some city councilors say topless dancing objectifies women and could lead to sex trafficking. We're fooling ourselves if we think that that doesn't happen with this business or couldn't happen with this business and why do we want to open the front door for that? With a vote of six to two, the license was denied, but there's still no closure for either side of the debate. Two city councilors argued for a sunset clause in the ordinance, allowing topless dancing at the Oasis for another 12 months, giving the business time to rebrand. There should be an opportunity to change the business plan. Since 1964, this is operated um, with a cabaret one license, and I don't know that 12 more months is really going to be the end of the world. In Wapaton, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. The sunset clause could be debated as soon as the next city council meeting on March 6th. The owners of the Oasis Bar say they're interested in possibly rebranding as a sports bar, but they need time to come up with a plan. Police in Red Lake, Minnesota, and the FBI need the public's help in locating a missing woman. 27-year-old Amy Dow was last seen leaving her home in Panama on January 27th. Authorities say that they're concerned because Dow has not made contact with family or friends, which is unusual for, for her. She's five feet tall, uh, five feet three rather, weighs 98 pounds and has brown eyes and brown hair. She also has two moles on the left side of her face and has a tattoo on the left side of her chest that says Castillo. Now, if you think you have seen Dow or have any information on her whereabouts, please call the Red Lake Police Department at 218-679-3313. We've got to deal with one more cold night before we start to see signs of warming up. How, Hutch, how cold will we get overnight? Well, we're going to be well on our way to sub-zero readings and some dangerous wind chills as well. And part of the reason is because of this fresh blanket of snow. Now, our southern counties saw the worst of it with anywhere from three to six inches between southeast North Dakota and lakes country near Henning, Park Rapids, Purim, and in Wadena County near Sabika. Six inch reports. We didn't get that much here between 2.4 and 4 inches reported in and around the FM area tonight. Wind chills are already bone chilling. 17 below is what it feels like on exposed skin in Fergus Falls. A wind chill advisory for many of our western and southern counties for first thing in the morning. Temperatures are already below zero for many. I'll have details on exactly how low they go. And we'll talk about a nice little warming trend. It does come with a couple of hitches in the giddy up and we'll go over what those are here in just a few minutes. All right, thanks Hutch. And make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so that you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so that you can plan your day. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. A woman here in the Valley says her child was put in a padded room at a school for misbehaving. She wouldn't go on camera with us, but did tell us that she's not happy about it. We contacted the school, which couldn't go into specifics about the case. So we reached out to West Fargo Public Schools, which also use these types of rooms. The one that you're seeing is an older version of what they have today. We're told that these rooms are used as a timeout for students. We like to, to be able to provide our students with safe spaces for them to um, be safe and to help regulate themselves to, so that they can get back in the classroom and to learning. 
The rooms do not have locks and rarely have doors. West Fargo is not the only school district that has these rooms, which are legal in North Dakota. A Pembina County deputy has resigned after a Valley News Live whistleblower investigation revealed he pushed a woman in the bar. Deputy Dustin Wadholm was suspended for shoving a woman when he was off duty. He was charged with disorderly conduct and a court date set for today. Sheriff Terry Meidinger says Wadholm resigned at the end of January and his prosecution is suspended, meaning if he doesn't break the law for the next 90 days, there is no punishment. Remember, you can call our whistleblower hotline if you need help with a serious issue in your community. 237-6576. You can call and leave your tip, and then we will do our best to get to the bottom of it. If you live in West Fargo, you live in the safest city in North Dakota. The National Council for Home Safety and Security came out with its list of safest cities with over 10,000 people in North Dakota. West Fargo tops that list, followed by Dickinson, Williston, Minot, and Grand Forks. Fargo was ranked seventh on the list of nine cities. They analyzed the most recent FBI uniform crime report statistics, along with population data and internal research. Cities were ranked based on the number of reported violent crimes and property crimes per 1,000 people. A show of support for a West Fargo 10-year-old who is battling an aggressive brain tumor. A miracle minute was held this evening in honor of Landon Solberg during halftime of the boys and girls basketball games against Fargo North. The parents of Landon were surprised by the way the community rallied in support of him. It makes you feel really special and, and know, know that a lot of people love Landon and want to support him. And so it's a great, great thing that's happening. It's, it's been very uplifting and just incredible, really, more than we ever expected and anticipated um, through this journey. So we're so thankful. Landon wasn't able to attend the event because he was shooting his own hoops at basketball practice. If you would like to follow Landon's incredible journey, head to our website, valleynewslive.com. Just in time for all of us to be filing our taxes. Word of scammers trying to get at your refund. Details later on Valley News Live at 10. Up next, word that the flu shot does more for your health than just protecting you from getting sick.